Hello and welcome to episode 6 of season 2 of Free Speech, the Natural United podcast where we go over topics that are important to Earth, the environment, space, society, and many other topics. So today we're going to be talking about something that I think is really interesting to think about. It has a lot to do with every human's roots, where we come from, who we are, and what our collective story is. And what's funny about this is it's changed even in the last hundred years, we've changed the perspective of where we came from due to different fossils that we've discovered throughout the world. So I think it will be important to consider throughout this episode that a lot of the information that I will talk about it is empirical data from science, but it is also subject to change in the years to come. You might find a fossil that will change our view of where the human path has gone over time, and um, in the event that, that does happen, it will completely restructure where our story is derived. But for now, there was a discovery made about 50 years ago that humanity basically derived from Africa in between 50 to 70,000 years ago. And this is the most up-to-date perspective that we have, and so that's what I'll be using in this video. But we'll kind of start right at the beginning, um, right when humans start writing stuff down about 5,000 years ago is when we can really validate what the human experience was like for people who were around in the past. So, recorded history, um, it does span about 5,000 years. You might hear some people say 7,000, and that just goes to show how unsure we are about the past of our species. We really don't know what's happened before we, um, before we were around, and before these last few hundred years, there was very little recorded information. So, um, the window of time for ancient history, it goes from 3000 BC, so 5000 years ago when we started writing, to 500 AD, 1500 years ago. Um, you know, people kind of have varying perspectives of when ancient history ended. I like to use the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476 AD. Um, I think that's kind of when we shifted from the... Um, the empires of ancient times and began moving into new, smaller, geographically smaller empires, but with more people in them because time had been uh, maturing. So in 10,000 BC, there were 2 million people on Earth, which is a good number of people, but it's 12,000 years ago. You think we're at 8 billion now, we're at 2 million 12,000 years ago. Wow, we've really proliferated quickly. We've come to life very fast. Um, and then you cut to 3000 BC, once humans discover writing, there's 45 million people. So, um, if you look at the 3500 year window of ancient time, you see that our population has gone up 100, 000, or 100 times what it originally was. Um, and that is astonishing, but you'll see when I kind of explain how we got there, how it was reasonable to happen, but the lifestyle changes that were caused by it. So when we look back into the future, we're basically looking at one, archaeology. What have we dug up? Two, source text. What have people written? How can we understand them better? Um, and so I think it's very important to consider if someone were looking at our modern society, what would they think about us? If they saw what we were writing, if they saw what they dug up, you know, if you dug up a channel changer, if you dug up a television, a computer, a uh, gaming system, a any any literature from our age, I think that we've become so diverse in what we write about that it would be very difficult to tell anything about who we were if you were just digging us up. Now, we have social media, which could potentially document all that we're doing forever. But beyond that, I think it is really important to consider when we're looking at the past, we might have an inaccurate perspective simply because the tools we're looking with into the past, they don't necessarily perfectly represent what it, what life would be like um, in the period where it comes from. Um, so this is all information uh, that I'm about to say from the modern scientific community. This is the empirical evidence. This is what students are taught in school globally, um, regardless of where you're from. And so humans emerge in Africa 200 to 250,000 years ago and now. There were species that were similar to Homo sapiens um, in Africa before then for up to two million years. We've kind of been two million years in the making for someone that is recognizably human, looks very similar to humans. Um, and then, as I said, 
So 50 to uh, 70,000 years ago, I like to think the 60 to 70,000 window is more reasonable. Um, humans leave Africa to go to Southern Asia, so that's Southeast Asia and Southern Asia. So think, you know, India and then the Southeast uh, Asian countries like Vietnam, Laos, that area. And then beyond that, 40,000 years ago, humans reach Europe. So Europe is only inhabited for 20% of the human history. And I think that's really important when we consider human history. Oftentimes, Europe is the main discussion. But they uh, have only inhabited modern humans for 20% of the time we've been alive. If anything, Africa has more to speak of on our past. Um, and then the, the ice bridge allows people to make it to the Americas somewhere around 15,000 years ago. Very difficult to tell the exact amount of time because it was an ice age. So it's not like we have very much information from that. Um, and then moving further even forward into the future, we hit the Neolithic Revolution. And this, I think, is the most fundamental thing that's ever happened to humans. Discovering fire is big, but fire even related to this. And it's the rise of our agricultural societies. We went from being hunter-gatherers to people who uh, had cities and farms. And what that meant is that if someone wasn't able to collect food for themselves, the village might have enough food to spare. And so... Then from 10,000 to 8,000 BC, we see the Fertile Crescent. And so um, this is the cradle of civilization. This is um, the cities that formed around farming that basically allowed humanity to grow into what it has become today. And so that area is Iraq, Israel, Palestine, Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, Jordan, Turkey, Iran, and Cyprus. Parts of, uh, some people include Cyprus somewhat, but I figured it was worth mentioning. And so... In these places, what we found is that there are agrarian societies, there are people who are living off farms, but also kind of creating these new societies that we've yet to see. And this sets the path for the future direction of humanity. And now before I get into any of the other story, I kind of would like to talk about that time period right before humans decided to go from Africa to Asia. Um, and the reason that this, this is probably the most important point in human history, we look back 70 thousand BC, this moment I think, this is my personal perspective, is more defining in our in our future, in our story, in the human experience, this is the most important tidbit of information that we are aware of. So around 70,000 BC, there was uh, this super volcano called Toba, it erupted in Indonesia, and it kind of caused a massive ice age across the entire planet. The temperatures went down 20 degrees, which is absurd. And um, we don't know the exact numbers, but based on DNA, we can denote that there are between 40 and 2,000 human beings left on the face of the planet. What that means is that we almost all died. And we were able to emerge from that, but there's still a lot of very similar qualities between all humans, because not that long ago, we were a small village of people during that time. So... That sets the stage for the rest of the story. So in the Fertile Crescent, you're growing crops, you have farm cities, but they also made really, really cool discoveries because now that we are kind of working together to get food, it frees up a lot of time during our day. So we discovered writing, glass, the wheel, irrigation. So during the switch from the hunter-gatherer lifestyle to the agrarian societies, the agrarian domestic groups, we see a lot of lifestyle changes, and beyond that, this is when we start to make our massive scientific discoveries. So, uh, as writing is invented, we hit 3000 BC, which is the early or the second early Bronze Age, and this is where we see the proliferation of Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt, two of the world's most interesting societies, because to our knowledge, they were the first people to create massive groups of cities. Um, and then beyond that, you have the five original societies. And I think these are important to know. This is where we come from. This is why humanity exists. And of course, there had to be groups of people outside of these five societies. But these were the five ones that were knowledgeable enough for us to really have a deep understanding. And if, if not deep, just a understanding in general of what they were doing, while there might have been rogue tribes all over the world that we are never aware of and never will be made aware of. So first one being Sumer. So they are the earliest known civilization. They kind of lived in the Tigris and Euphrates, if you're familiar with where that is at. They're, they don't have one country that they sit on perfectly. Um, but we, we kind of learned a lot about the progression of uh, how we got from them to then eventually the empires that would end the ancient, uh, the ancient age. And so 
Um, the second ancient civilization, one of the five original societies of Earth, is the Indus Valley. Um, and it went all the way from not just India, but uh, it was the Indus Valley itself. Um, so that's from Afghanistan to Pakistan. Um, so oftentimes when people think about ancient culture, they skip right to India, when in reality the Indus Valley has served as a cradle for life uh, for even longer. And so the uh, Air Litu, and they are in the northern China plain, and they kind of blossom into the modern Chinese society that we see today. So the reason that this is important is this is the society that turned into the largest collective group of people. And I find that to be fascinating. You know, what was it about the way that they lived that allowed for that to happen? Um, and then the fourth being the Olmec, which is the Central American tribe called the Rubber People. Um, they uh, had a very historic society, but a lot of it has been covered up, A, because the information has been lost, and B, because they were conquered. And a lot of that information fell to the wayside. Um, and then the Norte Chico, uh, they are of the Andes Mountains, a very, very early society of people who took the land bridge and then made it all the way down to the Andes Mountains. And, you know, from there proliferated a society that was removed from the rest of the world geographically, which gave them some massive advantages and was why they're one of the five civilizations. So urbanization in literature expanded due to these empires kind of spreading it. That When uh, empires would take over villages, they would spread their word of God and their information and their philosophy. And so you have the Greek kingdoms, you have Egypt, you have the Han Dynasty, um, which was famous for the Silk Road. You have the Mauryan Society, which is famous for creating Buddhism. The Roman Republic and the Parthian Empire, which um, came to be in Pakistan. So um, most of Earth was actually desolate. Like if you look at Siberia or Australia or Sahara, there weren't that many people around. It was very uh, condensed to these population centers. And that was when it became clear that kind of the nation state type mentality was going to be very important to humanity. And then comes the proliferation of religion, philosophy. So gods, the afterlife, supernatural um, information about where we come from. This started to proliferate when we brought people together and gave them an opportunity to talk to each other rather in the hunter-gatherer lifestyle of keeping away from each other other than your small group of people. Um, and then, so Alexander the Great, he basically spreads Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and the Roman Empire, though it caused the end of the ancient age, they are responsible for a lot of the spread of culture that allowed for the singularity of Earth that we see today, where people from different countries can empathize with each other and know information from each other. That started with the Alexander the Great campaign to go east, west, north, and south and expand the empire as much as possible. And then... This will be the last bit of this episode that I'll talk about. So the Library of Alexandria, we don't know how many books were in there. The higher end of the estimate is nearly half a million books. So 400,000 books um, demolished in 391 AD. So this is right near the end of the ancient age. But I think that that has been the most defining moment in human history, that I think we would be light years beyond where we are today if that hadn't happened. But it's an event in our history and a lesson to us that we should preserve every aspect of knowledge that we have about the world and not allow people to destroy our view into the past. Um, so I think history is really important. A lot of people will say history repeats itself. But beyond that, I think it's even more important to know where we came from, what lessons we shouldn't forget based on... Uh, all of the events of the past. So, you know, history shouldn't repeat itself, but sometimes it should too. And so, uh, you know, had that event not happened, had the Library of Alexandria not burned down, I think that the world would look a lot different. So we kind of have to look at what is the Library of Alexandria for us today. And I think it'll be YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. These are platforms where people can share their view on the world to anyone that they want. And I think that's why social media has the ability to be powerful. It can bring people together just like Alexander the Great was spreading information. I think that these modern tech lords are going to be the types of people who will allow us to share our human experience so people thousands of years from now can learn from it. Thank you guys for tuning in to episode six, Ancient History, uh, the free speech episode. And if there are any topics that you would like for me to cover in the end of season two, please feel free to reach out and let me know. But beyond that, 
I am really grateful for this million person community that we've developed. And uh, these next couple episodes that we're going to film, I'm super excited about. So I'll see you guys soon.